All right. Hey, what what's up? I'm here. Are you kicking this I, I off, Nico? I showed up Nico? for a podcast. I showed up. Yeah, what? I'm kicking it. What? Well, I don't see a banjo or a guitar in your hands. Were you going to play us a song? I was going to, I was going to, you know, give people like a hip hop beat or something with my, with okay, my. Okay, well, it's a good thing I started this podcast. Good thing you started it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's been a while since I've been on a podcast. Yeah. And, welcome uh, back. Episode 177. Yeah. Dang, dude. And uh, mm -hmm. today I threw out this idea to talk about Reddit in this craziness that's been kind of going down over there um and everybody in the room is kind of looking at me like okay what are you talking about and this is my perfect segue into an introduction to explain the context here okay. so um reddit about a month ago announced it was going to increase the price for api access so basically if an app that lets you look at reddit wanted to ping reddit servers and say hey can you can i have this page can you can i download the information for like this comment or whatever there's a cost associated with that. And Reddit took that cost and in the span of 30 days, uh, 20 x it. They turned it up. Oh my God. That's 2, right. 2,000%. <laughs> oh um, to which every third party app developer went, whoa, <laughs> I can't 20 x my revenue in 30 days, guys. And they're like, oh, well, we'll definitely work with you guys to figure something out. I'm like, okay, I sent you an email. All right. And uh, that's it. So this, we, we told you actually 20 X, that's it, the end, done. In like, and so <laughs> what's actually happening now is all these third party apps are shutting down because they can't just generate, you know, millions of dollars of revenue in the span of 30 days. And they're, you know, they're like, hey, we could try to spin this up. You know, we could like, we do have subscribers, you know, there's, there's a lot of these apps are really big apps. What's an example of one of those? Like parties? Apollo would be a third party Reddit app. Okay. That, you know, <laughs> yeah, thousands let's, let's and thousands give, and thousands let's, of Let's try to use. give a specific like, doesn't have to be an example, but a specific way that this would affect a business. So people well, yeah. So I mean, fully understand any any user using Apollo, the developer of Apollo, are all just shut out now, and it's done. They're closing down the app, and I think they actually closed it down, if I'm not mistaken, already. Um, what is I mean, Apollo for people who don't know? It's an app that lets you browse Reddit. It lets you look at Reddit. Okay. You can use the official Reddit app, which a lot of people say is garbage, and it's actually lacking a lot of tools that these other apps have so people have been using other programs which they have been doing for years in fact that's what i was doing for a while before i deleted all and reddit so apps on my because phone because <laughs> they raised the cost apollo which is an app specifically for a better reddit browsing experience can no longer ping reddit servers at the yes. same cost that they were able to do before because everything on the internet costs money it's called it's bandwidth right obviously yeah. video costs the most but you know just even simple data costs money Yep. So, uh, but the move here was like very much in, not in good faith whatsoever because there's no attempt whatsoever to work with this yeah, any of these app developers because it, it wasn't a oh we're going to increase co like they actually said in January they weren't going to increase costs <laughs> and they did increase costs but they did a 30 day window which they know is impossible to meet no you can't 20 x your revenue in 30 days like it's just impossible so it's it's very <clears throat> clearly a move to destroy right. and shut down all these third party apps but not just that that's the narrative that everybody kind of hears right. So there's another aspect here, which is Reddit is the one of the last points on the Internet where things are written by human beings. And granted, there's still a lot of bots on Reddit. But for the most part, if you're looking for something that a human being has written and not some garbage search result on Google, you type Reddit into your Google search term. Yeah, you I know? do that for sure. I do that all the time. It's the only way I can find something that's actually useful and written by a person and something that's not like filler garbage that plays the algorithm that Google needs to show up on their front page. Because Google no longer serves the consumer. <laughs> you no. know? Yeah. You don't get the results you need on Google anymore. It, it serves you sites that have the most Google ads on them. Google's um, just a modern, like, television station. They're just like, how many, you know, yeah. run them through, boys. So you, you have a situation here where the people running Reddit are looking at the fact that they're one of the most popular websites on the internet. They are basically they're the, they're Google's only source of real results, and they're also where all the data is getting pulled to be trained for things like Chat GPT. And they're like, "Wait a minute, how are we this big and not billionaires yet?" And so these they're like, "Well, let's create an IPO, let's start going public, and let's start making some money." First things first, all this content on Reddit is ours, mm. <laughs> aka API access, no more third party apps, no more. And hey, all you users, don't forget, everything you've given to us is ours. So all you AI companies that want to train off things that people have written, pay us. And suddenly this calls into light this question of the content on Reddit. It is not Reddit's. It's on their server. But the content was created by 
thousands, if not millions of people, mm -hmm. right? The content belongs to all of the people that created it. Like the stuff I've written on Reddit doesn't belong to Reddit, right? It's, those are words I put up there. And there's always been this sense of community on Reddit of like, it's, it's, it's a forum, it's a user base. The moderators are working for free. The people that have kept that site as much as they can free from spam and garbage and made it a usable community, it was all community led and community driven. So it's been community, community, community. And suddenly the people on top of the company are like, well, I would rather make a lot of money. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we've seen this kind of before, but it's, it's so blatant now. And it's tough for them because they, they fostered a community of like very aware people. And so when they pull the switch of like, okay, what actually all this content that you guys have written for years, we are going to shut all the gates so we can monetize it. You know, the, the community is like, well, screw you guys. Like, A, we, we didn't, we're not getting any cut of that. B, it isn't yours to begin with. And like all these other, you know, aspects around that. And when I see this happening, I see Reddit looking at the likes of like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and going, ah, these, these billion dollar companies somehow managed to convince people to make all their content for them for free, you know? And this is, this is one thing like that's distinctive about YouTube is YouTube didn't do that. From like the get go, YouTube's basically had a 50-50 split. But when you look at like the stuff going up on TikTok, the stuff going on Instagram, you're not making any money on that. Like yeah, no. these companies have have effectively made billions of dollars by getting everybody to make the thing that people watch on these platforms for free. Like we we scoff at like the notion of like paying somebody an exposure. Like, hey, will you just like could you like, you know, shoot my my short film and I'll I'll give you a credit. We're like, no, screw that. Like that's such that's so manipulative and like extortionistic, you know? But for TikTok to be like, hey, I'll give you I'll give you likes and eyeballs if you make content for me. No, I'm not going to give you any money. No, no, I'm not going to pay you, even though you, the work you've done has grown the right. value of our company by billions of dollars. Let me let me hit that We're pay you an real exposure. quick about TikTok monetization. So for those of you who don't <laughs> know, um, TikTok has they have TikTok Pulse, and then they also recently have TikTok Pulse Premiere. But it's basically the same thing. And what it is 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 uh, you put your video out if you have more than a hundred thousand followers. If that video is in the top 4% of a certain number of categories, I think it's 12 that TikTok defines as like, okay, these are good to put ads on. If your video is in the top 4% of that, you get a 50-50 monetization, but only well it's within the top 4% of that category, Oh my! which God. is usually for, you know, 24 hours or less. And so the monetization is just abhorrent comparative to like YouTube long form. And then there's all these other role, like in YouTube did, you know, their, their rollout of monetization of YouTube shorts and it's not much better. I mean, it's, it's a, instead of it being 55 to the creator and 45 to YouTube, it's 45 to the creator and 55 to YouTube. And again, it's just like, uh, it's pennies compared to, you know, it's, what, what are otherwise dollars. It's worth pointing out that YouTube shorts, make like maybe a hundred bucks for 10 million views, you know, maybe right. more. Yeah. But. I mean, you might, if it's longer, you might make 600 bucks for 10 but million. The point views. is for 10 <laughs> million views. Okay. Whereas, whereas a standard monetization of that type on a long form video, say it's, you know, predominantly us audience and yada, yada, you know, the, the CPM on that is going to be like somewhere between 10 and $16. Mm -hmm. so CPM you're gonna make uh, dollars per dollars views. per thousand views so you're gonna make 16,000 versus dollars. 600 yeah. dollars and yeah one's, one's an actual common, like hey you built yeah. the content for our platform people watch it here's revenue like one's yeah. actual revenue <laughs> which like to youtube's credit <clears throat> when i look at all of these modern media companies youtube is the only one that from the get-go is like all right content creators get a cut you know and not like right. and it's, it's not great but it's yeah. it's fine you know it's like we've yeah. been able to make a business at it for 12 years so i've never that. got the sense that it was like unfair because youtube's been also pioneering the whole like how do we build an ad environment and an ad ecosystem in in the world of online like they started right. it they forged that like and there's they've learned like there's real life like networking that needs to happen. You can't just algorithmically do ads. You need to have sales reps. They need to talk to companies. Like it's a person to person business at the end of the day. 
And so there's all this infrastructure behind it. Like, uh, yeah, I've never gotten the feeling that YouTube, at least for the normal content, has ripped people off. Like now when it comes to shorts, are they ripping us off or is there actually just no money in shorts? I don't know. <laughs> well, they say, they say it's both. And but that's, yeah. you know, they so they started with the pilot program and they said, OK, we're going to have a fund. And TikTok did the same thing. They started with a fund. And and that was to encourage people to like figure out, okay, what is monetizable for brands? And then let's try to get brands in and get brand money in. But, you know, I, I see it going down the same road as Facebook, which is just like somehow, somehow they haven't been able to come up with a system that actually benefits people for making genuinely good shows and content on their platform. Facebook? And, 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 and instead, yeah, Facebook hasn't. Facebook, yeah. I mean, there's people who, what's that? Yeah, Facebook, yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, YouTube yeah. has, Facebook hasn't. YouTube has, yeah. But that's the, and for the whole time they've been like, ah, guys, we just can't, can't quite swing it, you know? And it's like, <laughs> you, you guys have like, what, like 20, 30% of like the, you know, like the developed world's ad money online <laughs> and you can't come up with a system for like, they got just the metaverse, done. dude. <laughs> they build the metaverse. Man, have it, you guys yeah. seen like the Facebook, like Facebook content lately? It's no. There's so many, like, you think they're going to be a one minute TikTok, but then you look at the runtime, and it's <laughs> twenty minutes. Oh no! But it's paced like a TikTok, and they'll just be like, there. I saw one recently where it was like a really staged, like black belt versus corrupt cop showdown like body cam <laughs> body cam footage and it was just like them standing there and arguing in karate stances for 20 minutes <laughs> it's like a dragon ball z episode like, what is what is their algorithm like like how yeah how is that what what sells man yeah so like to circle this all back to reddit what we're seeing yeah. here is reddit's seen tiktok pull this off and seen facebook pull this off and it's like i want that i need that and and they're trying to make it happen, but they've built this site off this culture for over a decade of not being that. And it's kind of imploding and it's a little sad to see. And I mean, I get, was it Schadenfreude? Schoden, how do you pronounce it? Schadenfreude? <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> right. pronounce it, right. but uh, I get a little bit of that from watching it happen. Um, but, you know, I shouldn't. The, Against the higher ups at Reddit? Yeah. And just, I'm just watching like, because there, I think there are a lot of problems with Reddit. I feel like it really fostered, just like it happened on Facebook and Twitter, it also really fostered a lot of communities of like ignorance and mob, like violent, not, I guess, yeah, mob violence, mob mentality, mob anger, whereas yeah. it wasn't about taking a moment to like talk things out. It was about jumping on the thing that gets the biggest outrage reaction first, which gets the most upvotes. And then you build a, a mob, a literal mob. And, you know, it's an online mob, it's a cyber mob, but still it's a mob. And I, I you know, it was happening way too much. I just, I didn't really see any attempts from the people that run Reddit to like really try to curb that part of the culture. So, you know, seeing that part get caught up in it, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, it's, it, that's fine. <laughs> it's nice seeing that part get taken down a little bit, but like yeah, more so it, it brings into this, like this perspective that I've seen more and more, which I wish these companies didn't exist just for the sake of making money, but instead the culture was doing the best you can at what the company is supposed to do. Like, like Nintendo, Your, their job is to make video games. And don't get me wrong, you need to make money as a company and you need to make money if you want to do crazy things like make the Nintendo Switch and Tears of the Kingdom, right? Those things cost money. But like once you've created that ecosystem and you're successful as a company and you have the money you need to do these projects and you have the best of the talent working at your company, at that point, the culture needs to change from being how much more money can we make to how can we be the best at this? Like Nintendo, when they make stuff, it's how can we make the best dang video games that the world's ever seen? Be like, it's not how can we monetize DLC in like this free to play shooter to make the most money? You know, like Tears of the Kingdom has zero of that, right? It's just, it's literally you start playing it and it's just a work of art. And Reddit had like, Reddit has this thing where it's like, it was the internet's community. And it's too bad the goals aren't to continue being the best internet community out there. It's too bad the goals are now, how can we take all this user content that for years was created on our platform or put on our platform or for our platform, how can we take all of that and now make it mine so I can charge everybody access to it? Even though I didn't this create is, it, yeah. even though I'm not going to cut any of these billions you... with the people that made it, 
even though the moderators did all that work for free, even though all the users put it up there in good faith, open discussion, how can I now take all that and make it mine? And it's, it's scummy and I hate it. <laughs> this is what happens when you IPO. Yeah. I mean, this is, there's, there's good and valuable contributions that many public companies have made, incredible contributions to humanity. But the goal becomes how much money can you make? Like that's, the shareholders really become yes, like the, that's what the it thing. becomes about. And it's it's just that's that's just the nature of the beast. Um and we've seen this happen with, you know, people that we know who have done IPOs. Like, you know, they for example, I won't I won't name who it is, but we had some people that we knew that did an IPO and the entire culture of their organization changed. They they brought in people from, you know, X, Y, and Z parts of the chain such and such world from other public companies to do, you know, to come in and be their manager of this, manager of that, VP of this, VP of that. And the whole thing became about like, well, we just, we need to get rid of this and you need to do more of this and you need to do less of that all for the sake of just like making the company more valuable f as that being the goal. Yeah, they're going to yeah. do the thing they did at all the other companies they worked at. Right. It's like when YouTube Red hired a bunch of like TV executives. It's like, wow, it feels like I'm watching old TV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know they, they know how to develop shows. Cool. It's like, but you're going to get the whole reason people aren't on TV. Like, or sorry, you get the whole, like, <clears throat> you're going to forget the whole reason people are on YouTube. It's not to watch TV. I don't put TV on YouTube. I already didn't want to watch it. That's why I'm on YouTube, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's too bad to see that. I it's was shocked to, to hear that they were going to IPO. Yeah, I mean, part of me is all, like my my perspective on it's always been like you can't make that money privately with your business. Like if your business just can't make that revenue, how is going public going to help? Outside of just like getting a bunch of debt and then cashing out, which I guess you know for the people in charge that's great to cash out. <laughs> that's what they you know? do. Yeah, that's yeah. that's part of the deal. And then you leave it in the hands of these corporatists to figure out what to do with it after that. I mean, I look at Valve and Valve has never gone public, you know, and they're like the stewards of Steam, right? Yeah. That is their job. And it's their job is not to make the most money possible. They need money to do their job and they're making money. And I'm sure they like the amount of money they're making because they're making a lot. But at the end of the day, Steam, it's all about Steam and that's their focus. And they're always working on it and it's always there. It's like, and it is like the shining example of like PC gaming and like the marketplace and the storefront for that. Well, and every game they put out is like you're saying, it's like Tears of the Kingdom where it's just like, there's nothing in here that is meant to just milk you. Well, for actually, every... except for Team Fortress 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Counter-Strike. <laughs> but yeah, and Dota. Yeah. <laughs> no, they actually, they, they invented that whole monetization scheme. But still, yeah. like, there, like there still is clearly a goal to make the best product with Valve also, at least yeah. when it comes to Steam specifically. But, you know, all their games, like <clears throat> Portal, Counter-Strike, you know, they're incredible games. Yeah, I mean, it's heck, a the, real, the Vive, it, you know, the Index. Yeah. It's a real weird thing that we're in right now where there's billions, hundreds of billions of dollars being generated on ad revenue being spent online. Mm-hmm with hyper-specific focus on ROI and way better conversion than you ever got with print media or traditional TV. Mm -hmm. yeah. So not only does it work better, but there's more money being spent on it now than there ever was in the traditional mediums. And somehow, because the distribution is accessible to everybody, it's just, they're getting content for free, basically. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, it's yeah, crazy. it's like the entire it's, model it's weird, it's weird, is... It's weird that our culture doesn't see that. It's weird that people aren't like, yeah. oh, like TikTok it's slave labor. exploiting It's like everybody. slave labor. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not, you're, you're not, not forced <laughs> to do it. You're, you're not forced, forced to do it. To do it it's, like, but, it's, like, it's like everybody's an intern. Well, I think... Right. <laughs> that's, <laughs> the inter that's the interesting thing with TikTok is that the, the kind of bar for the content is so kind of low in terms of you know, there's good stuff on there, good informational stuff, but the production quality is not good at all. It's just somebody filming on their phone. Like each individual person, it's you look at it and go, well, you know, that's it's pretty low quality, but it's like millions of videos up being uploaded every day, probably. 
and the, it's oh, the yeah. sum total of everybody's contribution, but then the company just takes all of it, which right. is just, it's really There's weird. like 3 million uploads to YouTube every hour or something like that. Yeah. Something Ooh. crazy. And that's just, that's just YouTube. I'm sure there's more on TikTok because it's shorter form, but yeah, it's, uh, it's wild. Um, I'm not sure where it goes. Um, but it is, it is a little bit weird. And you know, when you look at like, uh, what were those movies with Jennifer Lawrence and she's in like the, the ga- hunger games, Oh yeah, <laughs> it, it feels a little bit like that. Doesn't the corporate it? hunger games. Where it's yeah, like, we it's have a like, website that has all these viewers and we will give them to you if you can kill all these other channels around you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it, and like the people who really make it on these platforms, you know, they come out dressed just mm-hmm. like in the Hunger Games movies a lot of the times. You know, it's like, where did you get these wacky clothes? I can't even pronounce your rapper name. Like, I don't even know what <laughs> yeah. it... And, yeah. and it's, yeah, um, it's just a weird phenomenon. You know, there is one point, I think, in the history of the development of like, you know, monetizing videos and all that, that was really pivotal. And I'm going to give YouTube credit again here because it's compliments to YouTube. So there's a phase where everybody started doing brand integrations where we're all like, hey, OK, ad revenue is cool. I mean, in the early days, you actually didn't get ads for like until like 48 hours after your video went up. So like most of your views kind of already happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you could um, also scam the front page to like sit there for a week. True. You could also, so. and also YouTube would glitch out. So if you're lucky enough to be on the front page, you might be up there for a week sometimes. Um, <laughs> and that was a lot of views. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but since ad revenue was all over the place, um, people were like, well, we do have an audience and there's plenty of other, you know, forms of media out there to take inspiration from like, you know, say talk radio. Let's just take sponsors and we'll just have our own sponsors in our media. YouTube can still run ads, but yeah, we'll have AKA brand integrations. Um, And this is the early days of that, right? That wasn't really a thing. Like there was no FTC like disclaimer that you had to do. You didn't have to say videos are sponsored, but YouTube rather than like for a brief moment, they're like, who should we allow it or should we take a cut? And like, I think there's a conversation of like, A, there's no way you're going to be able to control it. If you try to take a cut, like people are just not going to pay you. And B, if you disallow it, you're going to kill your platform. Yeah. And YouTube, to their credit, was like, okay, we're just going to back off. We're just going to make sure that there's the FTC disclaimer and we're going to make sure people know about that. But if people want to monetize their own content and do their own private like contracts, go for it. Even though it's on our platform, even though we are running ads against it, go for it. And f- to this day, it's been very hands off and like, and we can keep 100% of our own brand integrations that we, we sell. There's no conflicts with YouTube ads. There's like, we don't have to like futz with that at all. And I can't believe it's a system where we have that much freedom. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe that they were that like that chill about it. Be like, no, it's yours, which it is ours. You know, at the end of the day, like it's our you know context. It's where we're, we're host doing red the deals. inventory, Nico. <laughs> host what, red inventory. How much host red inventory do you have to sell? <laughs> do other platforms? Are there any that disallow that or? Because it's like a TikTok is way too short for someone to be like, let me tell you about ExpressVPN. Are you sure about well, that? No. They, they, so they did set the precedent. And most of the way that people who have blown up on Instagram or uh, on TikTok are making a living is through brand integrations. Yeah, for sure. That's brand almost the entirety of how they make money. Um, and so yeah, because they TikTok set the precedent for that. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's if you're making a living on TikTok, it's, I mean, if there's somebody out there who is making it on TikTok revenue, please comment. I would, I would <laughs> love to know. It's but like even the most I famous was, person in the world. Well, the I was, most yeah, ever. I was reading on, um, there was some creator who has like, they, they did an assessment on like, he has, you know, on, a, on like, they did an assessment on like 2 billion views that he had. And he was like, wow. oh yeah, that's just like, um, you know, that's just like extra revenue. Most of what I make is through brand integrations. Like, <laughs> yeah, wild. There, there's kind of a parallel here with uh, one of the arguments from the Writers Guild uh, is about specifically about streamers, which I really take to heart is that once again, these like massive corporations, they're all making their own streaming service. And the only way that they catch steam is when they have a good show on there with good writing, you know? Uh, just think about like Netflix with House Cards or 
even HBO Max with like some of those shows, Succession and stuff like that. And it's kind of the same thing where it's like, you know, I mean, even though those, at least those writers are being paid something, whereas like these creators on other platforms don't get paid anything. It's still this, like they're creating the thing that gives the company any value. And um, it's just this totally imbalanced share of the right. profits. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Netflix has 220 some million paying subscribers globally. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> when the minimum that you can pay is like seven ninety nine with ads, <laughs> two hundred twenty million people are paying you eight dollars a month, and you're charging ads. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! Speaking of uh, speaking of Netflix and brand integrations and YouTube, I don't know if this is a tinfoil hat conspiracy or if it's like you know if I'm onto something. But the recent like, have you all been experiencing the the thing with Netflix where like? The household sharing where you have the to, password thing. I I feel like that is a direct response to all of the VPN ads that are mm. telling people like, hey, guess what? Get XYZ uh, VPN yeah. and you can pretend you're logging into Netflix from Sweden. And like <laughs> Yeah. I feel like right. th that is why Netflix is cracking down on that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's part of it for sure. Um, Definitely part I mean, of it. There was, a time, the <laughs> there was a time when Netflix Twitter sent out a tweet that said, love is sharing your password. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, I think it's that. I think it's also just, you know, they're trying to, um, they're trying to make more money. And they, th mm -hmm. th at first it wasn't a problem because when they IPO'd, they had so much growth potential. And yeah. they just grew and grew and grew for like a decade. That company mm -hmm. just grew based on subscriber base. And then they had that snafu last fall where they lost, you know, half of their market valuation in like two weeks. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they said, ah, oh God, no more password sharing. Uh, let's let's <laughs> shut this down. <laughs> yeah, it's just um, this, cra this streaming thing is so weird. It's this insane model where it's like, we're just going to grow forever, which I guess is like every like public company. But like at some point you run out of the number of people who can subscribe to your streamer. Yeah. Like you just like, like, why can't you be like some like Japanese ink maker where he's like, I just exist to make the best calligraphy ink. And that's all I do. Like, why can't Netflix, once you have 220 million subscribers, why, why can't they just be like, we exist to make the best shows, and that's the only reason we're here. Yeah. Why is it still about <laughs> and no password sharing? <laughs> you know, it's like guys, yeah. you have two hundred twenty million subscribers. Everything on their like platform any, like, is, is Netflix original now. Growth, anyway, like inf in infinite growth is gonna like there is not infinite resources, whether it's viewers, whether it's mm -hmm. yeah, you got you got to be doing it because you love it. Yeah, your phone doesn't like you staying in Discord, does it? It Griffin? really doesn't. I don't know what's <laughs> up. Griffin's phone is mad at him. Yeah. So YouTube launched their shorts thing a while back. Yeah. Which is kind of like their answer to TikTok and kind of like Instagram. I don't know how it's doing. I don't really like check up on that stuff. But then, you know, it's become quite invasive. Like when you open yeah. the YouTube app and it just goes straight to It doesn't shorts. do that to me because I've, I'm so anti-shorts. It doesn't oh, do it. Oh, so like, it knows. It knows. Because okay. I actually do... Let me see I what happens have, when I open it right now. I watch a lot of like cooking content mm. and that is the best shorts content on any platform because it's just somebody making a thing and you can just watch that. I can watch that for like, you know, <laughs> a long time. So I get lost in that. Yeah. So maybe I'm a shorts. Okay, so maybe, the first you know, thing it did target. was give me an ad for YouTube primetime, official TV shows now on YouTube. And then, yep, the first thing it gives me is shorts and I don't even watch shorts on my phone. Let's see. I'm going to quit YouTube. It I'm gives me an ad and then it gives me shorts. No, it gives me home. It gives me the home screen, which is just videos and some yes. stuff. So, and when you scroll through your feed, how often is it showing you bars of shorts? Because I, even in my subscriber feed, I'm scrolling through and every other sort of row is shorts. And it's like, it's all over for me. So you don't get it as you're kind of scrolling through? No, it's it's just videos for me. It's interesting. Because, well, hmm. I, I dislike this idea of companies trying to distract you. Where it's like, if I open Instagram to look at the posts my friends make, and if I scroll a little too far, and there's like a really curiosity-inducing like reel that's like right under there, it's, it's, it's so blatantly like they're trying to be like, hey, hey, look, hey, hey, 
It's like, yo, hey, shut hit. up. Stop. <laughs> like, I'm not here for you to like hit me with some shocking video or something. Like, I just wanted to see what my friend's post was. And I scrolled through the feed. Once I got to the end, I wanted it to stop. Right. And it really Half is of the feed scroll now is, is things you're not no, on, on Instagram no. profiles you're not well, following. Once again, I also turned off any suggestions. You can only turn them off for okay. a month at a time, but I did it every month that it popped up. I've you never can only stopped. turn it off for a month at a time? Yeah. In fact, I may it maybe I did it enough that it just gave up on me. Um because I haven't <laughs> had that suggestion for a while. My feed, like my feed is only people I follow. I I the moment it is not that, I quit Instagram. Like I do not want to follow random people online. I only want to follow people I want to follow. And thankfully, YouTube subscriptions also does that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like Instagram, you know, they try to distract you. YouTube's like, well, everybody loves shorts, I guess. And all these companies are making billions of dollars. We should probably try it. Um, so they have shorts. And, you know, one of the things was like, hey, guys, if you guys make shorts, it's really helpful for reaching wider audiences on YouTube. And we're like, oh, let's give it a shot. We made some shorts. They went viral. They hit wider audiences. We're like, wow, they were right. Let's try it again. Let's do some more of this. And then we realized that the people watching shorts on YouTube are not the people that go and watch long YouTube videos at the same time. It's different audiences. And we also realized that we're not, we're not creators or influences where our face is our currency, where our personality is our currency. We're like, we're not Will Smith, where it's like videos of us is what people watch. Like we're creators and people want to see what we make, right? They want to see the renders we make or the films we make or whatever, the experiments that we do. And like, you know, cool. Or like we're not we're not annoying personalities, you know, we don't ruin the videos if we're in them, but like people aren't necessarily coming to the videos to watch like me crack some jokes, for example. Mm -hmm. And so having a short with us in it also doesn't boost our value at all because our faces aren't our currency. Mm -hmm. And so now we're caught in the spot where it's like, well, maybe shorts aren't worth our time, even if there are views there because there's no ad revenue. The audience that watches them is not the same audience that's going to go and watch like a 15 minute long VFX artist react. And they don't actually build value because it's our work that's our value and a short kind of cheapens your work <laughs> and it's not our face that's the Damn. value and that's kind of the main thing that you put in a short and so yeah i don't know shorts yeah i'm curious about <laughs> i'm curious Hashtag about shorts. i was digging into some of the analytics today to really get to the bottom of the question of whether or not people who come to our channel from a short actually end up watching the long form videos which is what they're known as now we, we, we used to call them shorts <laughs> because it was comparison to movies and television, but now it's considered long form. Um, and I haven't gotten to the, the uh, an empirical bottom yet to understand exactly that, but that's kind of what we need to, we need to crack is, is whether or not that's actually, uh Oh, did your power go out? They're on. Yes. Him. <laughs> Can you hear me? still here? Your internet's still up. Oh, my man. internet's still up. Okay. Yeah. How is because, that possible? <laughs> it's because Thank I have you. my, well, my, well, hold on. Actually, my, my breaker, invading. I might just have, have to flip a breaker until they get to your location. <laughs> okay, but anyways, <laughs> let me, let me flip this breaker. That's the thought I'll leave you with. I'll be right back. <laughs> It's like, are you getting uh getting attacked by like a SWAT team or something dude. like that? Yeah, dude. I think the Russians are in. This is Red Red Dawn for dude, Jake. If a 10 minute video is considered long form, how long until like a short is just like a dopamine release, like flashing light pattern? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like they, the scientists learned that if you flash red and blue back and forth with the green every five <laughs> seconds, it induces the same dopamine hit as a TikTok dance video. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's weird, man. It's weird. Do you, do you guys spend any time on Reddit? What's your social media of choice? I would say I used to spend more time on Reddit. I would say Instagram is like the number one. Well, besides YouTube, I spend, you know, mm -hmm. I would say I watch YouTube as much as I watch any yeah. streamer or anything like that. But yeah, outside of that, Instagram. And then Instagram is really my engagement with like the actual content that's being made on there is like if there's cool artists making stuff, I'll follow them. I'll surf the explore page, but really it's, I like, I'll, I'll sort of like find myself on the explore page. I don't mm -hmm. remember how I got there, but I'm just like, Oh, what am I doing? This is just random garbage. <laughs> and then I like turn off the app, but yeah, YouTube is like the main way I consume content. Mm -hmm. I'm back. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I Hi, watch Hi. a ton of YouTube and I am active on Reddit, but I am active in exactly one community. Uh, I am 
I only use Reddit to go on the, the fingerboarding. I was going to say tech deck, yeah. So that I can just go and be encouraging to like kids who are just starting out. It's like the, it's like the one nice thing I do a day. That's, That's great. Awesome, so it's going to be like, good form, man. Keep it up. Yeah, my Reddit experience got a lot better when I literally cut out every single default sub. And like, I basically only follow the Corridor subreddit, the Stable Diffusion subreddit, and then like, I don't know, like two or three other like wacky tiny subreddits. Yeah, mine was I, like back in the day was the DC Comics subreddit. <clears throat> oh, but, hell um, yeah, Dean. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were on that. But then uh, it became very toxic once the Zack Snyder movies started coming uh. out because he has like this like super rabid fan base. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah I, 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 on my phone, I really only check Instagram on my phone. I don't really watch YouTube on my phone, but I do watch YouTube almost every night before I go to bed on my TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I like it because usually it's like, a, it's like a wind down thing. I don't, I don't really like very many sh narrative shows. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just, some of them I get into, but, if, but most of them by and large, I don't really watch them. So, you know, that leaves you with movies or YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, I watch movies, you know, whatever, just like the next person. But, a lot of times it's like, oh, two hours. I don't have two hours to sit. Like, I got to go to bed, man. You know, I have like an hour, <laughs> maybe. And so I'll just, I just follow a lot of different uh, shows on YouTube. There's a really great one that I watch a lot called Medieval Madness, which is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like historical breakdowns of certain aspects of life in the Middle Ages. And it's really good. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's a it's like an energy thing with the narrative shows versus YouTube. Like my yeah. girlfriend and I will eat dinner and we'll like sit down for something to watch with dinner and we're like, how are we feeling tonight? Do we have the energy to like engage mm -hmm. in a narrative thing or because you want to bring yourself to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like YouTube is sort of gi like give me like do the work for me. Like sometimes with a narrative show, it feels like you're you're like, all right, let's let's actually use our attention span to like engage in this narrative. Mm -hmm. But YouTube just comes <clears> at you and is like, here's information, here's dopamine, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even yeah. though it's like, I will, you know, even if I, I sit down and I'm like, oh, I don't have two hours to watch a movie. I'll sit down and watch like three hours of like 15 minute, <laughs> like, top, like top 10 worst train derailment accidents. <laughs> it's like eating a, a freaking burger. Like... <laughs> For some reason, that feel like is it just like the the illusion of like control? Because it's like yeah, it's I'm like, not gonna stop. I think after you, just, one you, you know you're gonna get video. something good. It's like going to McDonald's. Maybe not. You know you're gonna get something decent that's at the quality you expect. No surprises, and it's reliable. Yeah, it's like all reliable. Look, you there's go a back, lot there's of good a, shows on YouTube. There's a lot of good trained derailments. Like there's yeah, a lot yeah. of content there. And I don't mean like narrative shows necessarily, but I mean channels who have established shows, just yeah, like our channels, Absolutely. where there's a there's yeah. a ton of those, and they have you know the people know what they're doing. They've got good insights. They know how to do the thing to keep it regular. You you check it every couple of days, and there's always something new. It's mm -hmm. there's a lot of those. I feel like it fills. At least for myself, it fills the whole of like maybe like reality TV because I've never consumed that. Mm -hmm. But like it kind of is that same, I don't know, thing. But I feel like it's on YouTube oftentimes it's more <clears throat> like nutritious because you're getting like information A that you bit. can practically use. Or the mid the medieval madness journey led me also to uh, like naval ships, medieval not medieval, but Renaissance period naval <laughs> ships. And then and then that re that led me into like wars in the Caribbean. And then that led me into like Caribbean and Florida documentaries. It's, it's a really <laughs> weird path that I've been on. Dude, it's so fun to go down those rabbit holes because like I've I've been on a trajectory this year of like uh, like cave diving accidents to like <laughs> last night I watched I watched like the like the full family tree of uh, the old and new testament okay wow <laughs> wow yeah and it's like stuff you would never <clears throat> ever be like oh yeah I'm I'm gonna look up this subject I'm very interested in this but you just see like yeah they okay, should do a bible tier, tier ranking I've got, <laughs> tier I've ranking got a volume the on that <laughs> funny <laughs> enough <laughs> Griffin <laughs> Moses was S tier dude <laughs> Part of yeah. the ocean, son. 
<laughs> um, what are some of you guys' favorite YouTube shows? Uh, Johnny Harris is a big one. He's been really popping off recently. He makes really good stuff. Um, man, who else? Because oftentimes, oh, this guy called Internet Shaquille. I don't know if you guys mm. ever heard of him. I haven't He's heard awesome. Of him. It's like sort of a cooking channel, but he makes like super tight, like 10 to 12 minute videos where it's like, here's this super like uber specific like cooking technique that you can implement like practically in your life. It sounds it's cool. not, it's yeah. not like you got to buy this sous vide or something. It's like something that you can really practically do. Um, right. Who else? Oh, there's so many. I don't know, Griff, do you have any? Yeah, I've been watching... Top 10 train derailments. <laughs> <laughs> my, my like, my two really big channel, or they're not really big, but, like, the channels where I, like, don't miss an upload are um, That Chapter and um, Coffee House Crime. They're two just, like, really, mm. really good true crime documentarians. Oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, just, like, really high-quality, well-written shows. Just... On YouTube, free to watch. <clears throat> That's pretty rad. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Jake? Uh, well, like I said, there's um, Medieval Madness. I've been checking that out. And then um, there's a good, like, uh, you know, modern issues, uh, kind of a interview style show called California Insider. That's pretty good. And then um, there's this farming channel that I'm always watching called Just a Few Acres Farm. <laughs> which is uh, this guy that has a small farm in New York State, and it's 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 fascinating um, how he is makes it, a living doing what he does. Is it more like slice of life, almost like primitive tech things, where he's doing stuff on his farm, or he's just talking about? It's, it's more like it's speaking. He, he's talking about stuff while he's doing slice of life stuff. It's really he he he's this old former architect who was an architect for like super long, but for the previous he grew up on a farm and his previous like seven generations of his family were farmers in new york so he he understood the <clears throat> the trade but he went off and did architecture for a long time and now he makes a living on a small 45 acre farm which is small f to make a living off of with when you're doing cattle farming or beef farming and he sells it at the local farmer's market and to like people in his community and he makes youtube videos about it and it's it's really fascinating like everything from how the current agricultural industry is and how it's kind of set up against small farms to uh like how to actually raise the animals and stuff yeah it's it's good stuff that's what he, he was a, he was a, he was a public speaker so he before so he like took that and took a lot of the same principles that he learned in public speaking and and just sort of, i don't even know if he knows he does this but he he applies these really basic techniques that we took years to sort of vet out and figure out about storytelling and how to do a YouTube video and how to present an idea. And then like, don't waste the viewer's time and don't be boring and then have a conclusion and like all those things. And I think it's because he was a public speaker, but yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. He's like a 55 year old guy who you would totally not suspect to have a, a really pretty good YouTube channel. <laughs> and how many uh, <clears throat> subscribers generally do you, would he have like, he has, I don't know, he gets like 200 to 250,000 views a video. Oh, that's pretty good. And he, he releases like three to four times a week. So yeah, he's doing he's doing it right. Because that's what's so cool to me about YouTube, again, is like this direct connection with like a niche audience or like people who you're specifically trying to speak to. Like there are channels that my girlfriend watches that are like, the person only has like 50,000 subs or something, but she really connects with the content that that person makes, you know, because right. it's just speaking to something specifically in her life. But, um, right. Nico, you didn't go. What's your, uh, oh. YouTube channels that you're watching? Uh, video game Donkey never disappoints. Oh, dude, Donkey. Mm -hmm. He's so good. Um, the I'm battle, writing some of these down. The battle report, um, or no, uh, the operations room and the intel report. That's what they are. Uh, the operations room is uh, gives you like basically a top down map view of famous battles, like told mm. like to the person detail. Mm. So like for example, like different uh, easy company fights they went through France. It's like here's the maps, here's the <gasps> movement, it's like no, step Jake's, by step. <laughs> Jake's so excited. <laughs> Have you seen the Band of Brothers uh, episodes that detail the easy company movements in France? Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, so it, on the Intel report, 
<laughs> no, no, but like I, in the Band of Brothers, yeah. in the Band of Brothers series, it's yeah, probably should, a lot of the same battles. You should also watch the Operations Room. Okay, I'm break down check those that fights. Out. Yeah, it's pretty good. Those guys are crazy. I can't believe they did what they did. <laughs> how do they, how do they remember where like every person went in a, in a battle in World War II? Like, I I don't even remember everyone who was at my birthday party three months ago. Like, <laughs> I guess when bullets are flying, everything gets really seared in your memory. Ah, <laughs> drama. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I've been learning a lot of piano recently, so uh, David Bennett Piano and Jason Zach are like the two like piano guys I've been following. Um, mm. Really good teachers and like really good at like laying things out in a really understandable way, but also being YouTubers and being interesting at the yeah. same time. Uh, other than that, I don't know. That's about it. There's a, there's a Ganondorf guy that I've been following ever since we started playing Smash called MGK Ganondorf. Oh, dude, he's so sick. <laughs> he's sick, and he gets like 400 views a video. Dude, those breakdowns. Like, so I knew he was going to go up to the platform, so I did an aerial <laughs> flame check. Yeah. Hey, MGK, if you're listening to this, uh, I would love a training session. <laughs> I would love to fight you and see, see what you got. Yeah. I got to look at a few more for shoutouts. There's one called um, Stylized Station. He makes really cool, like, they're kind of like Unreal Engine videos, but he does a really good job of, uh, he'll do some more like in-depth kind of tutorial videos, but he makes kind of like us, really good, broad, top level, Joe at the gas station could understand videos about like really complex 3D topics like parallax mm. mapping. Mm. And we'll do a whole video about that. And um, he's really cool. I don't know who else. He's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you see? Did you see what Sm the Smosh video that they put yes, out? Yes, that's. I makes me so happy. Yeah, that's that they so, yeah. bought the channel back. So rad. So they like, they bought their channel back from uh, Rhett and Link, Good Mythical Morning. Which the reason why Rhett and Link came to acquire it because originally Smosh was with um, Defy. Defy. Yeah, and Defy had bought them like a long time ago, and then Defy went out of business, and then Smosh partnered with uh Rhett and link to stay alive but that's recently such a, yeah man, that's such a hard like imagine you know you've created this youtube channel it blows up it propels you to success you're doing your dreams somebody comes in and says hey we can help you develop this into something even bigger you're like okay you know so far so good let's do it and then imagine and they buy it from you but as part of buying it you know they give you a lot of stock in the company and imagine without warning, poof, the company disappears. All that stock that you had that they gave you for your channel disappears. Then and this that channel is. that's yours yeah. didn't disappear, but it's not yours anymore. And like, imagine that you've built this whole thing and you've made all these like decisions in good faith and then just poof, gone. Like right. that's got to be so gut wrenching. Yeah. And like Happens the fact all that the they, time. Yeah. yeah, the fact that they kept making stuff, kept, you know, doing what they wanted to do. And then the fact that Red and Link like were down to sell it back to them and like put them back in charge of the channel, like it makes me really happy. And it's yeah. like it's really cool to see that there's people out there that are like putting things back the way they're supposed to be. Nature's healing, guys. That's what right. it felt like. <laughs> Time Since heals the MCN, all wounds. The MCN times. Nature's healing. Oh my god, <laughs> we're still it, healing from the MCNs. That's what it felt like, man. Like I saw that thumbnail and clicked on it. And I saw them sitting there together. I was like. Maybe things aren't so bad anymore. <laughs> you know? <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, we, we've known both those guys for, like, forever. I mean, ever since, yeah. like, YouTube was a thing. And it's just, like, yeah, they're really good people. And it's just really cool to see this happen. I'm sure it was scary as heck. Uh, I'm sure they got a lot of work to do. <laughs> but, you know, it's really great that it's actually happening this yeah. way. Yeah. But that so just to tie in a point from earlier in this conversation, the whole IPO and, you know, businesses for the sake of making money thing. This is what happens when you take venture capital money. Mm -hmm. You take and a lot of times, you know, people take it for all the best intentions. But if they don't want to go down the road of just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and big, it's like literally in. What is that Dr. Seuss book? The Lorax, no, and he's like, like, yeah, oh, no, yeah, in the, the Lorax, and the, trees, yeah, yeah. And, and and he's like, hey, what is your intention with this? The Lorax asks him, what is your intention? And he's like, my intention is to just keep biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, 
and that's and that's what that's how it starts. You take you know you take pre you take seed money, and then you know it's pre profit money, and then you, you you know you have to prove up how you're going to make profit for the people who gave you the seed money, and then once you get to that point, then they go all right, let's do a let's do an A round, let's do a Series A round, and then oh let's do a Series B round. Meanwhile, the entire company you just chip start chipping away you know your control of it. Well, you bring in on all this debt and then in order to pay back the debt, you you have to continue to grow because that's the only way that you can pay back the debt at a rate that is acceptable to the investors. And yeah, it's just, it's a strange thing. And, and unless that's exactly what you want to do where you're like, no, I'm going to make a product and I'm going to take seed money and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And then that's yeah, literally going to go- Yeah, if you're like making go- like- an air conditioner or shoes. It's like, I want to sell this to everybody. Right. Then it makes sense to grow it as big as you can. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, there's, yeah, there's not a lot of art in the air conditioner. You know, I, I think some sure air conditioning that, engineers, <laughs> some electrical engineers may, may argue with that point, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's not like a hand. It's a bit of a different it's, thing. You're making a, totally you're making different. a physical product rather than like an yeah. idea. Yeah. Cause yeah. like right. a YouTube channel, you can't, really grow it in a in a certain kind in like a in like a public company kind of way because it's like the reason people go to your channel is for the specific kind of thing you're making like you were saying earlier it's like people are going there because it's a reliable thing right. and the nature of the growth is to just start diluting the original creators like intention so- so we had some people reach out to us uh, and say, hey, um, we want to give you guys, you know, an investment round to do whatever you want to do with it and X, Y, and Z. And I was like, okay, what, if you were to come in, what would you want? How would you, how would you make your money back? And he's like, and it was all the same stuff. It was like, well, you're going to start new shows. You're going to do shorts. You're going to do more merchandise. You're going to do products. You're going to do, and it's like, you know, they had a whole plan. But imagine that. Imagine, you know, we're a team of, what, 15 people? Yeah. And imagine now it's like, okay, well, now we need somebody to make the mobile game. Now we need somebody to do all the shorts. Now we need somebody to do all the extra merchandise outside of just the shirts we sell. Now we need somebody to do all all of that. And then yeah. all of a sudden it becomes this unrecognizable thing when the purpose is to what? Well, you yeah. make more money. It's like, I don't yeah. know. It's like whose yeah. life is made better in that process, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, right. I like making short films, but you know what I'd really like? Having to do a, like a couple hours of approvals meetings every day. Every day. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, man, that, it's, that's tough stuff. And like, that's the thing people don't really warn you about. Like, and at the end of the day, what's it all for? You can't take the money with you when you go. You know, it's the experiences that matter. So right. if you're lucky enough, if you're lucky enough to be in a position where you're building your own thing, and you're making a profit, like, sure, you could make more money if you did other decisions, but never forget about, like, why you're doing it in the first place and what makes you happy. Yeah, Reddit. <laughs> yeah, Reddit. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> if you read the terms of, like, of agreement when you upload something to Reddit, it says that anything you upload, Reddit is given a universal, in perpetuity license to use it however they want. No. Yes, it is a blanket. Is anything that, you upload is ours forever, and we can do anything. We can create. We can. We could spin off a series with those all characters. All mediums we to. now known are hereafter oh, devised yeah. throughout like the a whole universe. Creative writing. You, I mean, there's tons of probably. No, I know. I mean, it's bull, it's BS because like clearly somebody uploads a Disney GIF. Reddit doesn't own the Disney GIF, but that <laughs> yeah. it Reddit says they do in the agreements. And I mean, they went and trademarked Wall Street Bets, even though somebody created that subreddit. Now it's their idea. Reddit's like, oh, it's ours now, and they tried to sue them. Reddit's like, no. It's ours. Man, Everything you put on Reddit is ours. Shit, right there. <laughs> yeah. <Like that>. <laughs> <laughs> they learned nothing from history. <laughs> but you know, I, there's probably a big chunk of people that'll be like, "Whatever," and they'll just keep using Reddit. You know, well, that's yeah. probably. I mean, there's there'll always be that chunk. Is. Yeah, but I don't think. Yeah, like new new generations won't move on there because, like, I mean, kids growing up now, none of them use Facebook. I'm hoping that, like, my daughter when she gets into like elementary school. It's going to be like, uh, Instagram, that's lame. TikTok, yeah, that's for old people. 
I mean, for all I know, they'll be all about like neural psychedelics and like who knows what it'll be yeah. at that point. <laughs> it's like it's sorry, be the flashing I used... lights when they're just like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I use direct do no dopamine neural stimulators. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I experience a whole story in the span of two seconds. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm hoping that like this craze of trying to be an influencer and like following influencers and like I'm hoping that my children it's like it's like yeah we uh we think it's way cooler just to like go downtown and see our friends you know yeah they're like i made i make handmade tortillas you know <laughs> instead of I going like on knit. instagram <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully yeah, probably, man i mean it does come down to raising too you know you can raise much. your kids with an interest in those things and they will foster an interest in those things that's um, true but if but if you i mean we saw this with jj uh he started preschool. He's in his classes. He has a friend in his class who him and JJ just got super into monster trucks. Hmm. Like every day, every conversation, every their entire social structure was structured around monster trucks. And we had to <laughs> we had to cool it. We had to tell him, hey, bud. <laughs> It's it's fine that you like monster trucks, but there's other things in life. And <laughs> there are other things in life. Wow, what other a than metaphor, man! You guys are living yeah. this like metaphor lesson so hard with monster trucks right now. <laughs> that, that that, and that's what it was. <laughs> that's gonna it, be in the like uh, the biopic about JJ when he's like a retired <laughs> like monster truck star driver. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be the scene where his parents are like, "There's more to life than monster trucks, JJ." He's like, no, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we had to cool it on that for a little while, and uh, he's come around. You know, he's still very much a fan of monster trucks, but it's not the only thing he does. It became yeah. the only thing he was doing, and if we hadn't uh, recognized that and talked to him about it and kind of shifted his focus on some of the things, you know, and I think that happens a lot. Is just parents, they go, oh, you know, maybe they're not where they should be or, you know, as focused as they should be, and kids go down these rabbit holes of just, whatever it is because mm -hmm. they just handed them an ipad and we're like here here's the entire world of knowledge yeah we don't do that yeah we don't do You're that five we, enjoy we, <laughs> our our local library actually has uh ipad rentals and they have all the like stuff already set up on it so we'll just rent one for like two weeks oh, cool. and then bring it back and then oh, cool. get a different one and it'll have each one has different games and different you know tools and different videos and stuff on it um, but you're not just, you know, handing it over and then just leaving the room. I'll see um, you in three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Yep. Come on, Reddit. Come on, Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Try having some principles. <laughs> Be like YouTube. At, somewhat. Yeah, at least. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, at least it's a, a, a star to shoot for, you know? They're not perfect. <laughs> Be no, no, no company's like perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, well, thanks for listening, everybody. I hope yeah. our rant didn't uh, upset you. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope we didn't discourage you from trying to become a big TikToker, you know? Just, yeah. <laughs> no, it's totally going to happen. You got this. You're different. You make know, sure you leave room it. for brand integrations. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too edgy where a brand won't give you an integration because then you probably won't be able to do it as a living. <laughs> <laughs> you right. some bits of wisdom. We'll have to have like a business <laughs> podcast at some point here. All I think right. we just did, man. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, Bye, everybody. everybody. See you later. Take it easy.